All right, are you ready for some hull breaching? Then you've come to the right place because there's probably gonna be a, just a little bit of it going on here as Jen lays siege on my sector of the galaxy. And as you recall, or her right, right at the end of the uh, first, she had, you know, there was some enemy within. We had some stowaways on board and they took over the cockatrice. So it's two cruisers versus one. But I've got some drones, I've got my station. I'm not down and out, let's get going, okay. So, the first thing that happens in an engagement, we already saw that, that is, you know, first the attacker and then the defender can play event and uh, tactic cards, and we both did that, and so that really mixed things up. Jen thought she was going to be hitting with three ships instead of two, but fortunately I had that tactic on hand or else I'd be in really big trouble. Um, so that was actually quite lucky. That's done. Next comes what's called the, oh, was it, is it the maneuvering? No, 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 the skirmishes. <clears throat> Certain ships have either the raider ability or what's it called the interceptor ability and those ships that what's special about them is they can jump the queue there's going to be a very orderly queue of attacks based on initiative you know my little drones they have initiative one they'll get to go first and then all the fives go there's these these guys and they'll go in order and then finally the space station nine if there were some other things here if there were some fighters that had a two it'd be my drones then the fighters then the small ships then the big ships then the station you know so it's really nice and orderly but if you have, if, if Jen were attacking me with, with ships that had the Raider, if Jen could have stolen my King Fisher, she would have a, a ship with Raider, and this level five ship would jump the queue and start attacking immediately. And she would also, now normally, when Jen is coming, she's gonna have to fight with my ships first. She cannot go directly for my station because in the first round of, a, of an engagement, a battle, the station is off limits because I've got like a defensive line. But after the first round, if Jen does not retreat, if she stays around and fights, because the, the, the combat can go for as many rounds as you want. So if Jen sticks around for a second round, then she could start hitting my station. And remember, that's what it's all about. But if you have a raider, you can jump the queue and go straight to attacking the station. Now, fortunately, Jen has no raiders. So that's not gonna happen. And I don't have any interceptors, which is the defense version of that, where defense guys can go before anything else. So, you know, Jen was coming with the Raiders, I could jump in with the, the Interceptors and, you know, they'd, they'd fight. But, as it is, none of that stuff's going on, so we'll skip Skirmish and go straight to Volley. That's where everybody, one at a time, takes a turn <clears throat> and goes. Oh, by the way, you know, I, I should probably, it occurs to me, I should have mentioned. Remember, I was, I was mentioning Jen had these little Starfighters? You might be wondering, well, why didn't they come along? You know, why aren't they here as well? So Jen has even more firepower. The problem is, little tiny fighters are, cannot travel through the galaxy on their own power. If Jen had had a really big ship, like, uh, like where's a really big ship? Uh, come on, give us some bigger ones, give us some bigger ones. I'm gonna have all the really big ships because I'm the shipyards. She, I know she's got some in here somewhere. Like, like this battle cruiser, you'll notice this battle cruiser, uh, the second icon from the right, can carry one fighter on board. So Jen could have brought, you know, like basically Battlestar Galactica along with her, uh, the, the Osprey, and she would have been able to bring these fighters. But as it was, she couldn't do that because she was only bringing medium-sized cruisers. So that's why her fighter wing had to stay back home. So go back home, go back to the garrison where you belong. Sorry, just, uh, just in case anybody was wondering, where's the fighters? Let's have that, let's have some uh, fighter combat. And of course, you know, I might have defense fighters. And if there were fighters, of course, they would be fighting first because they would have a lower initiative. But this is all medium-sized cruiser-on-cruiser action. So, but before that happens, I've got my drones. My drones have an initiative of one. That means they get to go first. Nobody goes before them. If Jen had any ones, then the tie break would go in favor of the attacker. The attacker has the initiative, so if Jen had ones, they'd go first, and then my drones. If Jen's drone were here, which it didn't make it, it would go before mine did. But I get to go first, and what these guys do is they paint targets. And what that means is they lower the defense of their target. And so there's only two ships attacking, so only two of my three drones will actually be able to do anything. And let's see, I'm going to have, which, and I'm going to have each one of them paint one of these ships and I'm lowering the defense on. That's what you know, these little blue chips mean. It's either the blue or the green chips. I can never remember which. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're consistent, both of these have been painted. This guy painted one, this guy painted one. And, now, and why was it three? You'll notice it says paint, target paint X, where X is equal to the number of dead eye designators I've got. And I've got three. So each one of these reduced the defense by three. And so now both of these guys are easier to hit. And my last drone didn't have anybody to paint, so he'll just kind of hang out. All right, the ones are done. Now, there, are there twos? No. Threes? No. Fours? No. Let's move on to the fives. 
and Jen is the attacker, so she will get to go first. She will get to attack with both of these cruisers, and then afterwards, I will get to counterattack with my level five cruiser. And then once all the fives are done, then we'll come over to my station. My station with a very slow ponder speed of nine will get to counterattack as well. So Jen is up first. <clears throat> and both of these ships are really good for attacking because this one is stealthy and it has alpha strike and this one she just stole from me has annihilate and overload. Oh my gosh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be very bad. Let's go with the uh, annihilate overload first. Now what overload means is, well normally Jen would roll three dice when attacking with the Coctress. But if she wants, she can overload the weapons and roll with seven dice instead. Is this seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She can roll with seven dice. That's going to be bad. And annihilate means that whenever you roll a perfect 10, instead of doing one point of damage, you do three. So Jen, in one, with only one hit, could take out my Fisher, which only has a three. So, and now the other thing is, Jen can divide these dice any way she wants. She could just put them all on the Fisher and, you know, almost guaranteed take it out. But I think what she's going to do is, she wants to take all these things out. So with that, she's going to put two on this drone, two on this drone, and three on the Fisher. She happy with that? Now you have to declare everything before you roll. You can't roll and then see, oh, that went well and then change. You gotta declare everything. So I think Jen's happy with this. Now the downside to overloading, by the way, of course this is, it seems like it's great. She gets to roll seven dice. This could be very, very bad, particularly with the Annihilate. The downside is next round, it'll be overloaded and she, the Cockatrice will not be able to fire at all. It'll just be a sitting duck. So, but you know, Jen's willing to do it. Let's see. Let's have her start taking out the drones first. So she's going to roll against this. The defense is eight. So with these two dice, as long as Jen rolls an eight, the thing only has one hit point, so it'll be destroyed. So let's see if she gets any eights. And she got a nine. Oh, come on. This is overkill. And a ten. So that means she did one, two, three, four points of damage. Yeah, the drone is gone. And now there's one less drone. So the remaining, well, first of all, that drone was painting him. So boom. He's not painted anymore. And now this, let's see, so this one, oh, and the other one is not doing as good a job anymore because there are fewer drones. Now, I'm not sure about that. I, I'm pretty sure the, the target would get adjusted immediately. That might be wrong. If so, you know, somebody can correct me. Let's see, but I think, let's see, let's just look at this. Target Painter X. I haven't really used tar target painting very much yet. Uh, I mean, not fire is normal. Yeah, it's split between, for example, uh, all the texture signatures, the next minute we reply, all right, and we immediately, um, to next turn, firing order, and are removed immediately if the ship doing the target painting is destroyed. Yes, that was correct. So, boom, suddenly, this is not, all right. So now, her next two shots, she's going to try and take out this drone and protect the cruiser. So again, she's just rolling, all she got to do is roll a single eight. Oh! Now that is heartbreaking for her. She actually wishes she'd hit this one first because it's much more, she, I mean, if this thing dies, she doesn't care. It wasn't hers anyway, she stole it. She does not want to lose her Raptor because she's got Marines on there and she doesn't want them to die in the vacuum of space. But unfortunately, she failed to hit this. And now let's finish off. Now to hit the cruiser, it's much easier. It's a bigger target, only needs to roll sixes. But remember, any tens, or actually just three sixes and this is destroyed and I lose my Marines. Oh, this is gonna be scary. I can't even look. I'm literally rolling with my eyes closed. What is it? What happened? A two, a three? Oh my gosh. Wow. That is lucky ducky. That's what they call me. Okay. So, uh, the King Cruiser, you know, it must have been there were still some loyal crew members on that ship that fought back just at the nick of the time and, you know, sacrificed themselves to save the cruiser. That must have been what it was because that was a terrible roll. All right. Okay. So, Jen's a bit disappointed by that, but she's still attacking because her cockatrice is attacked. Now it's time for her raptor to attack. Okay, and the raptor gets to roll three dice. And again, now Jen can spread these dice any way she wants. So she could like put two on the cruiser or she could put all of them on the... <sighs> I think she'll do this. Because here's the interesting thing, I haven't really talked about this. This is a stealthy ship, which means by default it has a defense of five, but stealth adds an additional five. So this thing actually has a defense of 10 which means you need a perfect 10 to hit it. And by the way, 10s always count as a hit no matter what. Even if like, the defense was 15, a 10 will get a hit. And a 1 is always a miss no matter what. So, you know, very standard. So this thing is normally a 10. The, it's, it's down to a 2 because of the drones. Jen, it would be nice to take this thing out because then it would be, you know, back up to its defense of 10. Very, very 
hard to hit. But here's the thing. This has stealth, which is uppings defense, and it has alpha strike. Alpha strike means that in the first attack, and only the first attack of the first round, um, she, uh, she gets to add three to every die result. So that means she could really be rolling three to 13s with all these dice. And so she's feeling pretty good that she'll have a chance to hit this, and she really wants to start wearing down this Fisher. Um, you know, she, even if she gets both hits, it won't kill it. Actually, maybe she should just put all three on here because she'll have a very good chance of completely taking this out. And then there's nothing between her two ships and my station, except for my station, which will fight back. You know what? Actually, to heck with it. She doesn't care about the drone. It's in for a penny, in for a pound. She is going to wipe out the cruiser. So she has to get a six. But because uh, this is an alpha strike, she only has to get threes. She needs to get three threes. I think I'm doomed. This is going to be quite scary. A 10, a 4, and a 4. That, that's three threes. Boom. Alpha Strike took out the Fisher, and I just lost these Marines as well. That's not good. Okay. Yoinks. I have no... Okay, well, I was about to say I have no defenses, but that's not true. I've still got the station. Now, the station, um, by default, does 4, but I've got this defensive suite, so that's 6. The station gets to roll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dice. Very scary. Very scary. Oh my. Oh, this is really bad. All right, well, now here's the thing. I think all, you know, again, we could split it, but it's going to be all on this raptor. I have to destroy this raptor because if not, after all the volleys done, this raptor could fly over and start trying to destroy my modules. And because I have no Marines on these modules, they're sitting ducks. She could destroy them straight out. If I had Marines on here, they would defend it and there would be an additional fight. Oh my goodness, I am very, very scared about this. So, okay, all six are going towards the Raptor. And unfortunately, I gotta get eights or better. I need three eights. Honey, you wanna come blow on the dice for luck? Can I just send him a kiss from here? Yeah. Okay, Jen's giving him a kiss for luck. Uh, three eights or better, or this is gonna be really bad. Oh dear, three eights or better, three eights or better, three eights or better. An eight? And, oh dear, and a six, and a six, and a four, and a five, and a nine? No, a six. Wow. Six rolls and only one hit. So Jen has just taken one point of damage. This is bad, folks. This is very bad. Okay. Well, we are done. Now we move on to the boarding section. Where, um, now interestingly, the, the Coctress has Marines on here, but they're special. They cannot board because it specifically says on the card um, that they cannot leave the ship for any reason. So, because they're traitors and they're just trying to keep the ship under control, you know, because there's still a lot of loyalists on this ship, that um, they're not going to be able to board. However, this guy is... Um, although, actually, no, wait, 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 wait. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. Because, remember, I said in the first round, the station is off limits. We're still in the first round. Even though Jen's got a free reign, she's going to have to wait till the next round before she can go for the station. So, right now, there's nobody for her to board. Um, Jen cannot board these guys because they have, um, you know, they or no, actually, can she? I think she can. Can she board these? No, she can't because um, a ship can only board something equal size or bigger. So a five cannot board a one. A five could board a, board a five, a six, or a nine, but there will be no boarding in this round because it's the first round. So anyway, that was the end of the first round and that was devastating. I have lost my entire starting fleet. Jen has stolen half of it. I've lost one of my drones and I, almost, and I haven't hardly even touched her. I've done one point of damage. And so now, at the end of the round, the round's about to keep going, and the round will keep going forever until Jen retreats. She just um, all her ships are all her attack ships are destroyed, or she destroys my station. And with no defenses, she might destroy my station. I'm a little scared, but she's got. Here's what she's thinking about: next round, before she can try to board the station, the station will get to fire again. And if the station can destroy the Raptor, it's over, and Jen won't even get a chance to board because remember, this guy can't board. So, does Jen want to push her luck, try to board, and you know, take out one of my modules, and, but risk losing her raptor, or is discretion the better part of valor, and she'll just pull back and leave me crippled? And while she just laughs off on her side of the bank, banker galaxy. Honey, what would you do? 
Apparently, Jim would like to go balls out at this point. All right, well, then she's gonna stick around. And actually, let's say, no, she's not gonna quite. She is going to declare, she, any number of them can, the, the raptor's gonna stay, the raptor's gonna fire, the cockatrice is gonna retreat. So the cockatrice is called for retreat, this is staying. Now, it doesn't happen immediately. If I had some fighters, you know, with some low initiative, but, you know, this is, if they were faster than this, they would get to attack him before he got to retreat. But anyway, we're now moving on to the next round, and, um, you know, there, there's no raiding or anything like that. Um, we go on to volleys. Uh, now, these guys can once again paint. So, and there's two of them, so this guy's going to paint here again. Now, unfortunately, I'd love both of them to paint, so it'd be even easier to hit, but only one of my drones. So this guy, what the heck, he'll paint over here. Not that it matters, it's completely pointless because that thing has been declared that it's retreating. Okay, the ones are done. Now it's time for the fives. Jen has the only five, she'll go first. First five, bye bye gone. Jen has stolen my cockatrice and added to her fleet. Ouch, that's not good. Now, well, let's go on to the next five. Hey, here's this one. It didn't leave. Um, now, it can fire. It could fire at these little guys or it could, it could open fire on the station. But you know what, because the station is gonna to get to fire back, I think Jen's gonna try and take out another one of these things to up her defense a little bit. So now her, uh, she's alpha strike, but she's no longer getting that big plus three. So she's aiming at this one, you know, the one that's um, you know, locked on her. And she's got to roll, just has to roll one eight and she'll take it out, just one eight. And she failed and failed and failed. Okay, so didn't defend. Now, moving on to the nine, the, my ship, my station fights back, and I gotta do this. I just need two eights, two eights. You wanna try and do a better job kissing these for luck? Air kissing? Why would I want you to do it? Ah, it was a fake air kiss for luck before, folks. I was doubly betrayed. Oh dear, okay, so, rolling six dice. I need to get two eights, otherwise, I lose a module, just like that. Oh, Jen's risking a lot, because, wait, 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 wait. Is that right? Yes. The, the default, five plus five stealth minus two is eight. She might lose her raptor now, but it's worth it to take out one of my modules. Okay, here we go. Two eights, two eights. I am visualizing, I'm visualizing nines, all nines. All right, here we go. I'm now, one of them fell off the board. I have no idea what it is. In fact, okay, you know what? I think I need to roll with my eyes open. <laughs> That's not really working very well. All right, let's go roll with my eyes open. Here we go. And I just dropped another one. All right, there it goes, let's drop it. Yes! Yes, folks, a nine and a 10. Boom, boom, Raptor dead. Okay, so destroyed. Jen lost her Marine, she lost her Raptor. I'd still say Jen came out ahead, because I lost two ships, Jen only lost one. And she still got her other ship that's ready to go. But boom, this is destroyed. It did not get a chance to board, and the fight is over because Jen's fleet has all fled or been blown up. But let's say, just for argument, just for, just for grins, I only rolled a 9 and I didn't roll that 10, so I only did one point of damage, the thing was still alive. So now it's time for maneuvers and boarding. You know what, just, since we're making something up, just for fun, let's say at some point I had, I had actually gotten a Marine on my station, to defend my station. Let's just say that happened. Obviously we're in uh, make-believe landing, but if we're gonna do some, all right, well, first of all, if, let's say, now, so now we're moving on to maneuvers. So Jen flies over here. Remember, she cannot touch or do anything with the station until these are taken down. So she could try to board this, but it's protected by Marines. So, uh-uh, she would board this. The Marines would go over here, her Marines, her, her security company, contractors. We get over here, No, nobody's defending it, so boom, this would get blown up immediately. And then we'd go to another round and Jen would decide if she wants to retreat or stick around. But let's just say for fun that both of my modules were defended. And now, Jen's come over here, which one is she going to attack? You know what? I think she would rather just attack my defense suite because it lowers the attack ability of my of my, um, what's it, my shipyards. She'd rather take out my attack ability rather than my ability to make more money. They're both would be good to take out, but she's gonna hit here. So she flies over here. And now that means, oops, we both reveal our Marines. And now it's interesting, the rules say it's at this point that everybody reveals their defenders, 
But you know what, if you know this game really well, if you play it a lot, you're going to know what direct assault, because you can see the name, you're going to know who they are. So Jen and I figure, you know what, when Jen was making this decision, she could look at both of my Marines, try and figure out who does she have the better chance of going after. And you know what, these guys have overload. She said, uh uh, she's not fighting those guys. She's going to fight these guys and try and take out my stock exchange because they have stoic. She's more worried about the overlord than she, over, oh, oh, but wait, wait, wait. Actually, these are both really good. So these guys get to roll five and they have six hit points. These guys get to roll four and have three hit points. Yeah, Jen's gonna go after the other one instead. They're both tough. This is gonna be a tough fight, but Jen, she looked, she picked this, and so now she is boarding my defense suite, and the only thing stopping from get destro getting destroyed are, um, is my direct assault response team. Now, here we go. Uh, combat works pretty much exactly the same. Oh, you know what? Again, I've changed my mind. She's going for the other one. Because if I looked a little bit more closely, she wants to go after the Glory Hound Company. And here's why. Her uh, assault team has an initiative of two. My guys have an initiative of four, which means she will get to attack first and I will have to counter attack. So she's excited about that. She wanted to um, get the first, because the other guys, they, they have an initiative of two as well. And now normally, when an initiative is tied, when, when, it's, when it's all the ships and stuff firing, it, the, the tie break goes to the attacker. But for this part, when boarding happens, the tie break goes to the defender. So if Jen were fighting these guys, they would have been able to attack first, and they would have hit her with overload and maybe just wiped her out. And so that's why Jen decided to take on the glory hounds instead. So now Jen gets to fire first. And now, you know, I could have had multiple Marines on a, on a, on a station. Oh, actually, this is the interesting thing. Look at this. Neither of these modules can hold Marines. So they are sitting ducks. They have to be protected by my ships, and I didn't do that. So, so but like I said, this was all make-believe anyway. Let's just say we have a fight, but just so you can see what that looks like. So Jen's going to get to roll first. If I had multiple Marines, she could spread her shots amongst them, but it's just a one-to-one -one fight. She's going to roll three dice. These, got, these repair and they're resistant, and she's going up against Stoic. Now, she has to beat sevens, so she needs, well, she needs six sevens. This is going to be tough. Let's see if she can do it. All sevens, all sevens. And she got one seven. That wasn't good. She had one point of damage. All right. Now, they, they get to fire back, and they get to roll five dice. One, two, three, four, five. And they're trying to beat a six. And I got a, oh, that's two hits, a, a nine and a 10. So Jen's uh, Marines take two damage. And now I continue. Now I forget, can you retreat in boarding? I don't remember if you can. I think you can. Dee, dee, dee. Uh, maybe you can't. No, I don't think you can. I think once you're, once you're in, you're in. Uh, I'll have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, wait, there it is. Marines cannot retreat from a boarding action, nor can the ships involved. So Jen's in a bit of trouble, but it's not over for her. We're going on to the next round. One of Jen's abilities is repair. That means every combat round, she immediately heals by one. And she's resistant. Now, resistant isn't helping her here. Resistant would, you know, remember that annihilate that gives you, uh, or like that alpha, sh or that annihilate that gives you plus three points of damage? Resistant means you don't take bonus damage, but the repair is important. So now Jen's getting to attack again. She's rolling with three dice. She has to beat a seven. And she got a seven and a six, so that's another hit. Oh, this is not going good. These guys are gonna take a while to bear down. Now they get to fire back, they get to roll five dice. She, they gotta beat a six. And they got a four, they got a two eights. That's two more points of damage. Ouch, ouch. But again, one of them is immediately healed. Jen's turn again. She rolls the three. And an eight. But only one hit again, this is ridiculous. And now I roll back, I get the five. And what am I having? I'm having to be a six. I got a nine and a 10, and a 10 and a seven. That was four hits, the Marines are dead. So this was a bad move for Jen to actually assault like that. And now here's the interesting thing that happens. If Jen's assault force gets destroyed, and goes back into her, her death pile, my guys could then counterattack and counterboard. And so they just jump right over here, and since there's nobody defending, boom, I have just stolen this Raptor from Jen. And now I have to keep Marines on here at all time because if ever, since this is Jen's ship, if ever Mar I, I transfer Marines off of here, then this ship will immediately revolt and I'll lose it. So I, I, so this can't, I can't really use this for boarding unless I put more Marines on here, but you can see there's only one Marine. So that was the risk Jen ran of assaulting that she could lose her own ship. But remember, that was all kind of a hypothetical because the reality is when Jen came with this Raptor, 
I didn't have glory hounds or a defensive response team because I can't have Marines. So Jen just flew over here with her guys, came down to my fence suite, said, oh, let's board. Oh, there's nobody defending it? Okay, boom, I blow it up and I'll get back on my ship. And that's the reality of what would have happened. You know, her, there was never any danger. And then at the end of the round, Jen has to decide if she's gonna retreat again. And, and if she does, she'll get Scott away scot-free. But if she stays, she's still gonna have these drones that are weakening her. My station will still get to fire, but now my station, because I lost the defensive suite, only gets to roll four dice instead of six. Um, so that's a big problem. But, you know, one more hit. If I just get one more eight, then I will destroy that cruiser. And I think, you know what, Jen's happy. She got rid of one of my modules. She doesn't want to lose the cruiser, because if she, if she stayed and I rolled, um, well, actually, she would have survived another turn, but she, she was discretionary by part of Valor. She decided to retreat, and since there was nothing that could attack her before her five on the initiative, she retreated, went back home, and was very, very happy with the results. Now, I am down to only one module before I lose it. I've lost all my fleet, and that was the first turn of the game. At the end of her turn, Jen still has her hand. She can discard any card she doesn't want um, so that on her next turn she'll be able to draw more. Or she can keep these, which means she'll get less new cards. And then on my turn, I draw up to five. I make some money, and I'm still making more money because she didn't destroy my stock exchange. And then I will try to rebuild my fleet before it's too late. Fortunately, I've got a battle cruiser here in my hand. And what else would I have? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Five. So this would be my hand. I'd have a bunch of resources. I would definitely get this battle cruiser launched, which is a jammer. The jammer is kind of like the painters. The painters reduce a target's defense. This reduces a target's offense. So this thing could just take a ship completely offline. And I've got a harpy. I don't know if I have enough. Yes, with my, with my, with my discount for building ships, I could get this harpy out as well. And this is a very nice thing. I can't upgrade it, but you know, it's, it's a good ship. It can have Marines on it. So between these two, I'm back in defense. I would probably get my breakthrough, my cybernetic and happens. I do this for free. It doesn't cost anything. All my Marines gained are from now on can automatically annihilate and repair. I would also probably put this talented engineer, although now I don't know if I'd be able to afford it. This is an upgrade to a ship. All opposing ships, lose their repair trait. When the repair trait is used on this ship, you may remove up to two wounds instead of the usual one. So, this allows me to make one of these ships repairable, and I have, ooh, I have an event. Dis um, deploy at the start of your logistics phase, shuffle all the ships in your scrap heap, um, into your shipyard. So, everything I lost would get to go back onto the top of my deck. Because here's an important thing. This deck does not reshuffle. Once it's empty, that's it. You are out of resources. You just gotta make do with what you've got. So this event could be very, very good. I probably wanna save this till later after I've lost a few more ships, so I'll be able to get a lot of ships back at the ready. But don't cry for me. Jen, she delivered a big blow, but I can launch a counteroffensive. I can get these things out. I could even strike back because her Raptor is crippled. But it's still stealth, so it'll be hard for me to hit. And neither of these, and plus it's three ships, so probably not, I'll probably wait. Because what I really want to do is I want to get a hunter. Like I see this battle cruiser. Okay, that doesn't do anything. What would I get next turn? Oh, I'd get a heavy cruiser, raider, interceptor. Uh, let's see, I'd get a nice marine company. I've got more stuff. I just have to survive one more round before I'm back on my feet. I can start getting some fighters myself. So I think I would just delay. I would build up my resources. And then it would be Jen's turn. And she might either come at me again because she, she can taste blood in the water or in the, in the sky, in the space, or maybe she'd build up for a little while. But anyway, now that's just a little, that is just the first round of this game. And this game gets really deep, really deep. But you know what, uh, let's just, let's do uh, final thoughts where they belong in five, four, three, two, one.